Welcome back everybody. Another episode of Amateur Pool. This is another match from the Amateur Pool Tournament. That was the opening break that we just saw. Um, I missed the actual break itself. I was setting up my camera because I did a battery change. Told the guys to hold on, but I don't think they heard me. Um, so we missed the opening break. This is Dan Vincent. He's the guy who just broke. He's playing Dave McEwen. Both good shots, guys. We're in for a good match here, so stick around to the end. If you like it, hit that like, and don't forget to subscribe. And check to make sure you're subscribed if you've recently subscribed or previously subscribed. YouTube, for some reason, has taken away subscribers for no reason. I'm not sure why. But let's get into this match here and check it out and see what's going on. This is Dave McEwen at the table. This is a 5-5 five to five race, winner's side match. Um, Dave's a good shot. You know, I'm not going to... I'm not going to go. I've got plenty of matches to post. I'm not going to go into anything that happened beyond this match. So uh, just stay tuned and watch as we post. I'm going to try to get one out every day uh, until this match is concluded or until the tournament's concluded. So Dave's going to shoot that one in the side, followed forward to broke out the three. That was a good shot. Um, what did he come away with, though? I think maybe he can see the six past the 14. Like if he can see enough past the 14 to hit the six, he can make the six in the bottom left corner as we're looking at the camera here. Or as the camera's looking at the table, I guess. We're looking at the screen, not so much the camera. So he's lining it up. If he makes this, he should be able to uh, follow it up with the combo, with the 4-2 combo. It's a little bit tricky, though. I don't think he has a full pocket. <laughs> yeah, he had, to, he had to try to, to not hit the two there. Um, he just... Moved it over, aimed it a little too much to his right. Ended up hitting the rail and missing the shot. So Dan Vincent's going to have an opportunity here. Dan Vincent came all the way from Sandusky, Ohio. It's like a, I don't know, three-hour trip or something to come up here and play this tournament. Him and uh, Mike Bircher. Those two guys, we appreciate you guys from coming in, um, playing the tournament. Keep your eyes peeled for future tournaments as well. We enjoyed having you guys. Enjoyed, uh, enjoyed watching you play too, man. Enjoyed watching you guys from Ohio play, even though it's Ohio, you know what I mean? It's a Buckeye state. And we're from Michigan. It's a big rivalry, but we treated them with respect still, you know? <laughs> no, they were both good guys. We enjoyed them. All right. So he's looking pretty okay with these stripes. If he can make this 10 ball with a stop shot, I would maybe shoot the 12 first just to get it out of the way because it's a tight shape and just stop it. Then shoot the 10 with the stop shot and he might be able to follow up with the 11 after that. Yeah, see, he kind of let off his stroke a little bit. He was pointing to where he wanted to be, but the cue ball drifted because he let off his stroke a little bit and the cue ball followed forward. So he can shoot this, uh, obviously he can shoot the 12 ball next, but he's got to be careful what he's going to shape after this. I don't know if he's got enough angle to follow if he shoots a 12 with follow, will he go off the bottom rail and back up towards the center of the table? I just don't know. I just can't tell from here, guys. But I think we're going to see something. If not, he may be able to stun out enough to see the 9. But he still has to figure out that 11 ball now that he didn't fall on it there. Yeah, I think he was trying to follow forward. It was a tough shot. Definitely tough from way up there. Way down yonder, you know what I mean? It was definitely tough. So Dave McEwen back in action, coming up to the table, figuring out what he wants to do here. Uh, so first match, I believe, for both of these guys, if I'm not mistaken. they, uh, I think Dave in particular had a first round bye. So this is the first match he has shot in the tournament, and he sat for quite a while. So I know he's knocking the rust off a bit. And I believe this was Dan's first match as well, but I'm not 100% certain on that. Just not sure. It couldn't have been, right? If Dave had a first round bye, then Dan couldn't have also had a first round bye, and then they play each other in the second round. Couldn't have been Dan's first match. So Dan must have played one before this. All right. Looks like he's going to try to get the squeeze at three and pass the six. Oh, no, he cut it to the other corner. Good shot right there. That was definitely a good shot into a blind pocket with no room for error. It's a good shot, Dave. Now he's got the six ball. Or I, I, I per personally would shoot the two first here um, because if you shoot the six, 
Uh, it's a little harder to control your shapes. Um, you can thin the two and you can come out and maybe, maybe hit the four or the 11 and the cue ball should drift out and then you can shoot the six next. Yeah, he thought the same way. Just seemed a little easier to shoot the two first where as far, not the shot was easier, but the shapes were a little easier. I felt like the run out was easier shooting the two first. All right. Is he going to follow this off the top rail and back out, or is he going to try to draw it? Is he going to follow it off the top rail with a little inside English? He checked it up. So he used right spin on that. It, it slowed the cue ball, but also took the cue ball a little bit away from the four. So that way he would end up with a, a pretty okay shot here, you know. Otherwise, this shot would have been a lot tougher. He still has still a little bit of a cut. He's got to make sure he takes his time with it. He did okay with it. He hit it a little hard, though, and now he's looking at a tougher cut on the five. I mean, he really just wanted to clutch up and make sure that he made, excuse me, that last shot. That's why he hit it a little hard. But now he's looking at a little tricky shot here. It's kind of funny because if if he hits the, the nine wrong, he may carry him into the eight and, and lose the game. So he's got to be careful. He either wants to draw outside of the nine or he wants to try to avoid the nine and the eight altogether. I guess he could try to hit the nine full too, but it's any way he goes with it is fraught with danger. You know, if he does the draw shot and misses the nine altogether, it becomes a very difficult shot. He's got to try to cheat it a little bit and spin it with some throw, and it becomes a real tough shot. So let's see what he does. I'm curious. Yeah, he tried to cheat it with throw, and he just cheated a little too much. That was a tricky shot, for sure. Um, it, was, it was a tricky shot because of where the eight ball sat and because of where the nine ball was. If the nine ball wasn't there, I have no doubt he probably would have fired that in and, and won that rack. But instead, Dan's up. Dan's up to the plate, batting cleanup. Let's see what he can do. Let's see what he can do. He's looking it over. I think he can make the nine off the eight. That's what he's looking at right now. Everything else is wide open. He's just got to be careful. I wouldn't shoot that, that shot first because it's going to push the eight towards his 15. And if he's not careful, he could put his 15 in a tough spot. So I would maybe, I would maybe get rid of the 15. Yeah, see, exactly. I would, I would have got rid of the 15 first and then maybe shot the 10 and came two rails up table for that shot. Just so this didn't happen. Now he's got to try to break it out, which he's got a good shot to break it out. He could use the 11 or the 10 to break it out realistically. He could use the 11 and put left spin, which that's what it look, looks like he's going to do. Or he could use the, the 10 and use right spin. He's going with the 11 with some left. Came down. Oh, he nicked it just enough. Great shot, Dan. Great shot, my friend. He's looking good here, guys. He can make this uh, 10 ball with a little left-hand English. And um, from there, he should be able to come up above the side pocket and have a nice, easy shot to finish this match out. Oh, is it going to go far enough? Just barely, I think. Uh, it makes it tricky because now when he makes this, he's going to run into the 10 off the rail. I don't think he can avoid hitting the 10 from here. Yeah, he did nick it. He made his shot. And now he's left with a tougher shot on the eight ball. Luckily, it's pretty close to that side pocket. <clears throat> so I've, I, I'm pretty sure he'll be able to finish this one off. Let's see. Sure did. <clears throat> Man, that was, uh, was a couple, a couple rolls on that one were a little unfortunate, you know, but that was a pretty good first rack. And we're looking at one to zero Dan Vincent. So Dan's breaking. He made a ball on the corner. It's open after the break so he can shoot whatever he wants. Remember, we're racing to five. It's one to zero. So Dave needs five. Dan needs four. Dan's at the table. He's looking at what he wants to do. Open table so he can shoot whatever he wants. Honestly, with that clutter down there by the foot rail spot uh, where he broke, with that clutter there, it's really a toss-up which one you want to go with. I may go with solids here. Um because that two ball blocks that where he's pointing right there, the two ball blocks that pocket. But if he can squeeze the nine in here and push those other two balls away, 
Oh, see, that would have worked out nice, and stripes would have been wide open after that if he had made it. But he didn't. You know, he missed it. So now Dave is coming up to the table. Dave's going to see what he can do here. I watched Dave quite a bit throughout this tournament, man. It was, it was pretty impressive. I know I'd seen him before um, in other tournaments, but didn't know him too well. Um, I'm, I, it's possible I've even played him before in tournaments past, but um, didn't know him very well. It's the first time I really watched him play. He was, uh, he was a good shot. He impressed me quite a bit. It's a nice smooth stroke on that 10 ball. He came up nicely for the 11. He's a little flat on it, though. Uh, it's a little flat on it, so he's going to have to figure out a way to get shapes. Luckily, where that 9 ball sits down there, he doesn't have to do too much with the cue ball if he doesn't want. He can shoot the 9 from up table and um, probably come off the 9 and hit the 2 and still end up with a shot afterwards. But it makes it a little tricky being flat like this. I may... I may look at playing this one rail first uh, in his position. Unless he has enough angle, he can force follow, like hit it pretty firm with a lot of follow and, and bounce two rails back out towards the middle of the table. Okay. Okay, he was looking at a safety play. That wasn't a bad play. The three, five are locked up. Uh, I don't think he can get it the seven or the six. He's got the four out in the open, and I think he can cut. I know for sure he can make the four in the upper right-hand corner. He might even be able to cut the four into the left side pocket and then send the cue ball over to spread out his 3-5. But he doesn't really have to spread the 3-5. Oh, he's going to be no rail. No rail on that shot. Whew. Under hit it just a little bit, man. Um, yeah, I would have I would have maybe tried to go with that one. You know, I would have tried to maybe make it in the side or down in that corner. Because right now, Dave, Dave's, Dave has the advantage where the two balls locked up down there. Uh, Dave's on the inside, and he has a nine ball he can use to break out his 12 ball. So Dave had the advantage in this rack. So instead of trying to play a safety and bunch up more balls, I would have tried to try to do something there. Uh, successfully or not, knowing the way I play, it probably would have been unsuccessful, but I still would have tried something. All right, Dave, Dave took a shot at it coming from the back side. I kind of looked at earlier shooting the nine into the corner with like a stun and coming over and just nicking the two, maybe even a stun draw and come back out a little bit. Uh, Dave went to it from the, the short rail off the back, and I don't think he got him broke up too well. I think he's going to end up having to shoot a combo, uh, the 12 9, if he chooses to try to run out here. You know, you know, you already know. You already know what I'm talking about, guys. As per the rest of these matches, this one is brought to you as well by shortrailapparel.com. Or you can do shortrailapparel.com or just shortrail.com. Both URLs take you to the same place, sucker. See, see what I did there? Got both the URLs. That way, it don't matter which way you put it in. Still takes you to short rail. And uh, you can still check out the shirts and, and get yours, man. Order you a short rail shirt, sucker. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Just kidding. You don't have to do it if you don't have to. But if you want to support what I do, man, a lot of people are on board with what I'm doing, trying to accomplish with Amateur Pool here. Um, if you want to support it, get you a short rail shirt. That short rail is not an Amateur Pool YouTube brand. It's just a pool brand, right? So anybody can wear it. I don't care if you watch my channel or not. If you like that brand, don't be don't be. Don't be scared to wear it. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not, it has, it doesn't have my YouTube channel name anywhere on it. It's literally just a pool player's brand for shooters, man. That's it. That's it, Jack. That's it. All right, back to the match. Enough, enough of the advertisement, enough paying the bills, you know, or trying to pay the bills anyway. I wish that paid the bills, man. I'd be a happy son of a gun if it did, you know, but it don't yet. So we're back to the match then, back to the action, back to action. Dave's looking at banking this 12 ball back into the corner by where his hand's at. It's not a bad way to play it, but he's still got that 13 up there in trouble. He may, he may be able to bank the 13 if he gets rid of the 11 first. If he makes the 11 here um, and leaves himself the right angle, he could bank that 13 pretty easily. 
I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still a bank. But as far as banks go, that would be a, a fairly easy bank. You know, no bank is guaranteed and no bank is actually easy, in my opinion. But if you're just like, if you had to play just banks, you would consider this an easy one. You know what I mean? That's what I'm trying to say, little Timmy. That's what I'm trying to say. You already knew it. I didn't have to explain it so much. You know, I didn't have to, but I did. But I did anyway. I think that's what he's going to do. He's going to make the 11, leave himself the bank. Unless he tries to break out the 13 from this shot. Yeah, he did. He tried drawing straight back into the six. That was a very touchy and sensitive shape shot. He just tried to shoot. Um, he missed it. You know, I mean, he can shoot that nine from just about anywhere. Is he going to try to thin cut the 13 right now and cross bank it anyway? That's a tougher shot from here for sure. If he would have just made the 11, he would have had a backwards cut. He could have banked the 13 a lot easier. But it's not to say he can't do it this way. It's just a little tougher. A lot tougher. Instead, he played a safety. Not a bad play. Not a bad play. But I think Dan should be able to make that one in the corner. I don't think that's too tough of a cut. And if he, if he can dig into the cue ball a little bit and put some draw on it, he can hit that six and knock that six free. Uh, so that 13 is not blocking the six. We'll just have to see how Dan decides to do it. He is going to shoot the one. I don't see him digging into the cue ball, though. Oof. All right. He may have just opened her up, man. That may be Night Night Gracie for this rack. We'll just have to see how it goes. Just got to see how it goes. He's just got to got to take caution here on, on where he shapes that 13 ball at because he's got to try to shape the, the eight without, you know, that six ball interfering. Um, <clears throat> I like making the, the nine with just center or a little bit of left and coming all the way over to the other side long rail um, and get as straight as possible on the 13. Then he can make the 13 and just draw the cue ball back maybe a foot or so and shoot the eight in the same pocket as the nine. It's kind of what I see here, but of course, it's a lot easier to play it that way from here. Oh, that's what he's doing. It's exactly the way he's playing it. Yep. And if he has a little angle here, he could even follow off the top rail and back down towards the center of the table for that same shot on the eight ball. But if he's, it looks like he's pretty straight. He'll probably just draw out of this. You don't need to draw it a ton, and it's easy to overdraw this shot. But if he just puts, um, you know, maybe a tip, tip and a half of, of bottom, has a smooth stroke, he'll draw back maybe eight inches, nine inches, you know, and he'll have a good shot on the eight ball. The eight ball is going to be tight, though, to go past that two, it looks like, so it's not going to be a given by any means, but that's his best shot, I think, to get on the eight ball. Let's see what he does. Yeah, oh, that's pretty. That was a pretty stroke right there, Dave. Pretty stroke, my man, pretty stroke. He's on the rail, though, and he's looking at a half of a pocket at best past the two ball. So this is no easy task for the match or for the game, not the match, uh, for, for the game number two in the match. Tie it up one to one if he banks it. And if he misses it, there's a good chance he's going to be down 2 nothing with an open table like this. You just have to see what he does. So watch his head movement, see if he stays still on this shot, you know, or if he jerks. He did, stayed pretty still. Um, he lifted up very quickly after contact, but it looked like he was pretty still during his stroke. Um, still missed it, but he put it in front of the four ball, which is going to make Dan's life a lot more difficult. Dan's going to start with his three. Oh, he's going to play a safety. Hmm, I might have made a couple balls there. He's got an easy breakout where that two is sitting. He's got an easy breakout. Dave's going to hit one rail and just try to get him by. Oh, he got rid of his breakout ball. That was a smart shot. That was a smart shot. I thought he was going to play one rail and just nick the eight. He could have actually tried to safety him and got the cue ball right behind the eight. You know, if he just barely, barely rolled it slow, nicked the edge of the eight and get the cue ball on the rail right behind the eight. And Dan would have been in a real tough spot. But with ball in hand, there's other breakouts to be had here. 
You know what I mean? <clears throat> Dan could play a different type of breakout here with ball in hand. He didn't necessarily need the two ball. You know, in a lot of instances, that's a smart play uh, to get rid of somebody's breakout ball like that when you're down to one and they have a ball tied up with your ball and they have a breakout ball. If you can get rid of that breakout ball, it just makes them work for it a little harder. But a good player usually is still going to get out on you when you do that. See, look, here it is. Oh, he, he made a good breakout shot at it, and he did get separation. Just I don't know if it's enough to really to run out. The only way the, the four ball goes now is if he shapes it short side um, on the left side long rail as we're looking at the table and shoots the four to the top right pocket. That's a tough shape to get, man especially since all of his other balls are on the other end of the table. So we'll have to see, we'll have to see how this one plays out here. He's playing safety again. Reminds me of that old pool hall junkies analogy that Christopher Walken, the speech Christopher Walken gave uh, the main character in the bathroom, the last scene. He says the lion's laying there and everyone's picking at him. And finally the lion just gets up and goes, you know, and tears everybody up. It's kind of like what you do <laughs> when you keep playing safety in this position. When you're the one who has the advantage with all the balls left, you're kind of poking at the lion a little bit because your opponent could make a kick shot or something crazy. You know, if you give them too many opportunities at it, uh, something's going to happen for them. So I personally like trying to go out uh, in that position Dan's in right now. I mean, it's it's a little it's a little nervy sometimes to go out in that position, but you got to be the lion, you know, and just man up sometimes and go for it. So look at this. That was a great shot. Great shot. Great shot. So Dan's got the one ball sitting in the corner. He could also probably make the five, it looks like. I don't think the eight's in the way. I think he can make the five. So um, Dan's got options here. Let's just see what he does, though. Is he going to play another safety? Is he going to try to go out? What's he going to do? What you going to do when they come for you? You know? You guys know already. You guys already know. Ugh. I'm tired every second of every day anymore, fellas and ladies. Man, this working stuff is for the birds, bro. It's for the birds, you know? Waking up early, going to work. Working nine to five, trying to stay alive. You guys already know. Okay, he's got a good shape here. Obviously, he's got a good shape on the three, but what he really needs to think about is that four ball, man. That's every shot I shoot if I'm Dan at this point has the four ball in mind. I'm either trying to break the four ball out or I'm trying to get shapes on another ball that I can use to break the four ball out every single shot at this point. I don't make a ball without that in mind when you get into this position. You play to safety. Play it another safety. So Dan's probably going to kick, or Dave's probably going to kick this one one rail just like he did last time. The, the thing is, if he, if he makes a nice little, a little nick off the eight and gets on the rail, um, Dan's not going to have a shot. If he, if he makes good contact here and does it at the right speed, Dan's not going to have a shot. Ever wish you could play like Efren Reyes? If you buy our new line of short rail merchandise, I can guarantee you'll play as good as Efren Reyes. I'm sorry, I was just informed I can't say that. I can guarantee you will not play as good as Efren Reyes. You'll still suck, but you'll look good doing it. Get you some. He's taking his time. He's thinking about it, as he should, you know. There was a lot of money involved in this tournament, so um, wasn't a ton of players, but the payouts were pretty well, or pretty good. You know, pretty well. That's so stupid. The payouts were pretty good, so, um, you know, people were taking their time, making sure they, they did what they could to try to secure their part of that pot. You know what I mean? So it's all about that money. M-O-B, you know. Money over billiards. Oh, I think he might have got it. I don't know if it rocked back onto the rail. I don't know. That might be ball in hand. We'll have to see what they decide here. 
rewind the tape. Let me know what you think. Was that ball in hand? Because to me, it kind of looked like he came off, hit the eight, and then rocked back onto the rail. Um, and if that's the case, it was a good hit, you know. But nobody called a spotter. Uh, and if there's a discrepancy and there's no spotter called, the discrepancy goes to the shooter every time. And that's, that's almost in any rule set you play. If you don't call a spotter and the person shooting says it wasn't a bad hit, then it's not a bad hit. Facts. I know sometimes people take advantage of that, but it's supposed to be a gentleman's sport and a gentleman's game. And sometimes it, people you play are no gentlemen. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what they're doing. They're trying to, are they talking about whether that was a bad hit? What are they doing? Did Dan have to run to the bathroom and take a dump? I don't know. We don't know the answers to these questions, guys. All we know is nobody's at the table right now. That's it. That's all we know. Might be a good time for a popcorn break or something, you know? Go grab a little snack. Go get yourself a brownie, you know? I'm going to have a non-sponsored drink myself, you know? Love Powerade. Still not a sponsor, man. Working at it, but no, no sponsorship yet. There he is. He's back. He's back, Jack. Oh, they decided it was ball in hand. Okay. So Dave must have said, yeah, I think it was ball in hand. So they were at the table. They could see it a lot better than I could. Plus, I didn't even I didn't even see it that great on camera. I was talking, and then I, as I looked up, I saw it roll. All right. So Dan's in good position here, obviously, right? He just got rid of his problem ball. He's going to get rid of his second problem ball. And that's not even really a problem ball. It's just going to be his second toughest ball. Um, I like this. I like making the six if he can follow off the top or what we're seeing is the bottom rail back out towards the middle of the table. Just like that. Give himself an angle. This is nice. He should be able to float right down for the eight in uh, the top left corner pocket. And this should be two to zero. Hmm, you hit it a little hard and it looked like you put left spin on it. Rewind the tape and watch as that cue ball came off the bottom rail, it came up to, uh, to the left. So that means he put a little spin on it. He may not have even meant to, but you definitely tell he put some spin on it. Now he went from a, a victory to a real tough shot here, man. I think he's got to try to bank it. I would, I bank it this one, you know. Um, depending on the angle, and it's hard to tell from where we're at right now, but if <clears throat> you look straight on the cue ball, you might be able to stiffen it up, meaning put inside English on the cue ball and bank it straight back. Um, the straight back would be like into the, the bottom left corner as we're looking at the table. Um, but if that, if that bank's not available, he could bank it into the opposite corner over there on the right. He's going to kick at it. He's going to kick at it. Oh, looks like he made it. Did he make it? Oh, no, it's stuck in the pocket. And then he forfeited it up. He said, go ahead, Dave. I'm not going to make you shoot that. Now we're looking at a one-to-one -one score, guys. This is shaping up to be a pretty good match here, guys. <clears throat> shaping up to be pretty okay. Pretty okay match. Yeah, it was a fun tournament. There were some good shooters there. It was fun to watch. I wish I would have played in it. I wish I could have played in it, you know. Um, I didn't want to play in my first tournament. I didn't think it would be extremely fair anyway because I did handicap the matches when, when a higher Fargo played a lower Fargo. They had to give up weight. And I don't feel my Fargo is accurate right now. Um, and I didn't think it would be right for me to play in it and have people giving me weight and stuff. Um, so I just, I just ran it, let them play. And uh, I enjoyed it, though. I still enjoyed watching them play. Um, but I think in the future, I'll, I'll play in them as well. You know, I just won't, uh, I won't, I won't play in Fargo handicap tournaments unless I increase. Like, I'll, I'll set myself at a higher Fargo probably because I don't want anyone to feel like I'm trying to steal uh, from my own tournament. Um, that wouldn't be right. You know, I'm not like that. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it, you know. My Fargo is a 527, and, and of course, I feel like I play quite a bit better than a 527. Maybe other people out there may disagree and say, no, 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 you play at a 527. But the fact is, I don't know for sure because I haven't played anything Fargo in quite a long time. 
So that 527 was established quite a while ago. Um, obviously, I've done a lot of practicing and playing since then as well. So I feel like I play better than a 527. And for that reason, I wouldn't put myself into my own handicap tournament at my current Fargo. That's all I'm going to say about it, guys. That's all I got to say about that. Daddy always told me life is like a box of chocolates, you know. All right, Dave McEwen's looking like he might have a mission in mind. Oh, he played that nicely off of the 14 ball, opened up the pocket for the six. If he can make this five up in the corner, um, he'll run into that 12 ball and he'll land perfect on the six or the three. But he's got to be careful if he does it that way because that'll push the 12 over towards the eight and he doesn't want to lock up the eight. So he may find a completely different way to play this one, but that's that's kind of the way I look at it right now. Um, I look at shooting the five up in the corner because I don't think the five will go past the eight into the side. It might, and if it does, that might be his best option. No, it looks like he's going to play it up in the corner, I think. Is he? Yeah, that's what he tried to do. He just missed the shot. That's exactly the way I was seeing it as well. I think it was probably his best option to actually get out on that rack. You know, not just make a ball, but get out. I mean, he could have made, if he wanted to make a ball, he could have made the seven ball, but then he would have been real tough on the five, three, six. So that's probably, uh, my opinion, the best way to play that is the way he played it. All right, Dan made a nice cut on that one. He's got a pretty thin cut on the nine if he chooses, or he could shoot the, uh, was that the 15 ball right there? Uh, the Burgundy, the Burgundy one, the Burgundy one. <laughs> if he shoots the 15, he could come over and separate. Oh, he nicked it. Just barely nicked the nine. It barely moved, guys. Rewind the tape and check it back. It barely even moved. That was a thin cut. But he left Dan or Dave a, a pretty – I hate the fact both their names start with D. I keep getting messed up. I apologize if I called you the wrong name at any point in time. But he left Dave a pretty good out here. Dave's got a wide open table. And I think Dave's in a pretty good position to try to get out here. He, he kind of flipped his hand up a little bit there, I think mainly because he didn't want to shoot over top of that nine ball. And uh, his intention was to be more towards the middle of the table. I mean, personally, I would probably finish on the three ball, but I mean, just the same to finish on the seven ball too. You know, key ball, uh, use those to shape the eight. Um, imagine if he had the same shape he, he does right now on the three ball, but the seven ball was gone. He could play it with bottom right and just come up and shoot the eight in the, in the other opposite corner. But he can shape it off the seven, too. It's just a little further away from it. It's not a problem, though, I don't think. Okay. So he can follow this one rail is the way I would do it, just straight top, uh, off the top rail, and go back towards the middle of the table. Some people try to put right spin on this and go two rails, but then you're crossing your uh, tangent line, you're crossing your shape line for the eight ball if you do it that way. Yeah, one rail. It was smart. It was a way to play it. If you go two rails there, you're crossing your shape line, and the shape becomes a lot more difficult. That was a nice shot. Nice. Well done, Dave. Yeah, I like Dave's game. He plays pretty strong. I like the way he plays. I like your style, sucker. He gave me a hard time at the beginning of the tournament, but, man, I think uh, he's an all right guy. We got along pretty well after that, and uh, I enjoyed having him play. Nice, solid break. Open the table up nicely. It's looking good. We may see a break and run here. It's very possible, guys. The table lays nice for it. The table lays nice for it. Just have to see what he does. Remember, guys, the, uh, the handicaps or the skill levels in this tournament were 625 Fargo and below. I believe both of these guys were right around a 600. I think Dan was around a 610. Or, I'm sorry, Dave was around a 610. 
And I think Dan was around like, a, I want to say 580, 590, somewhere in there. So both these guys were real close in skill levels. It was an even race, five to five. Okay, stunned over for the 13. 13 looks like it goes clear as day past the five, but is that the one or the five? I think it's the one. He may want to try to nick it just to open that pocket for the 11. That's completely a preference call, you know, personal preference, because you could end up missing the shot if you do nick it. Um, he doesn't have to nick it either. I mean, he could just play this 13 clean with top and just follow up and shoot the 11 in the other pocket. He doesn't have to nick it, but he could if he wanted to, you know, just nick it a little bit and push it over out of the way. And then you have both corner pockets for the 14 and the 11. Whichever way he wants to do it, it's personal preference. He did nick it. That was a good shot. See, it turned out nice. I probably would have nicked it as well because it turns out nice that way. As long as the, the one ball doesn't lock up with the 11, now he can make this 14 and just follow forward a little bit for a shot on the 11. He's looking good. Looking good in the neighborhood, boy. Looking good. Nice shot there. Nice shot there. I can play this 11 with a little top. Uh, a smidge of right, I would put just a smidge of right, but you got to be careful putting too much right because that six ball will come into play. So I like I like mostly straight top. Yeah, that's how I play it. He might even use a little inside the way it checked up off the rail. He might have used a touch of left spin. Either way, he ended up with a good shape here. Now this one, I play center ball and go straight back and forth. I don't try to get closer to the 10 because then that six ball comes into play again. Okay, he just slow rolled it. Played a little touch shot. That was good. Now, I don't try to draw this back and shoot the eight in the corner. I stop it there and shoot the eight in the side, right? There's less movement on the cue ball. Less movement on the cue ball. Let's see what Dave does. Well done. Well done, man. Barring a miracle... Dave's going to put this eight ball down, and we're going to look at a three-to-one matchup so far. That was, a, that was a nice break and run he put on here. A little clinic, a little break and run clinic he put on. Well done, sir. There it is. Well done, well done. Dan's not much you can do about that, Dan. You know, your opponent puts a break and run on you. You just got to tell him good job and wait for your opportunity at the table. It's all you can do, man. It's all you can do. Now, if they start putting two and three packs on you, that's when it gets a little bit scary. That's when it's scary. Oh, he's sprung a leak, man. Started making balls all over the place. This table looks great as well, except for the 3515. If he can figure out the 3515, he's got a wide open table. And if you take solids here, you got to think about the six ball as well, because it's not, it's blocked up a little bit. So I like stripes if. He can figure out the 15 ball. Um, if not, you could take solids and just figure out the six ball and the three five. I think the three, excuse me, man, the three five are pretty easy to figure out with solids because you have the one and the two. I keep wanting to yawn. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. Cut me some slack. It's a lot of talking. The one and two are so close to it, you could use either of them to break out the three five. Um, but that six ball is a little trickier to get at. You may not even need to break out the six ball. You may be able to shape it for either a shot in the side or once the three five are cleared out, a shot all the way up in the corner down there where he's looking at it. Okay, he's going with solids. Yeah, so he's looking at it that way. He's thinking, I'm going to break out the three five. He'll do that right here. Put a little stun left or a little bit of bottom with some left. And roll into the the fifteen five three. Problem is, once he does this, he's committed to the run. Oh, he's going to play a safety. What's he doing? He's going to play a safety. I think. Yeah. He got a good safety there. It was a good safety. But what's ball and hand going to get him here? I guess he could he could set up a shot on the six ball first. You know, and open up the six. But that one ball was the shot he needed to break out the three five as well. So he's just playing a little caution. He's playing cautiously, you know, 
it was a pretty easy hit though. Uh, Dan had a lot of balls down table, but um, he didn't get ball in hand, but he did get behind the, the six. So if it goes in the side, he'll probably shoot there. Yeah, it looks like he pointed to the side pocket. He's, now he's still got to figure out that 3-5, though. That's why I like breaking that 3-5 out off the 1 earlier. Now the 1's in such a spot, it's hard to break out the 3-5 with it. That was a nice shot he just made there. You know, he may be able to bank. He may be able to combo the 5-3 and bank the 3 cross side. It might lay perfect for it. He could take a look at it. Because if it's wired, you don't have to do much, right? You don't have to do much to it if it's wired. Played another safety. That was a good safety, but again, Dan's got all those balls down table. You know, it's going to be hard pressed to get a ball in hand from a safety here. I mean, you never know. It could happen. You never know, but chances are pretty low. Yeah. Oh, he scratched. Just as I say, the chances are low. I put the curse, the commentator curse on you, Dan. I'm sorry, bro. I apologize for that. You know, that's my bad. That's pro I probably did that to you. That's my bad. My bad. All right. Dave's got his ball in hand, and what's he going to do with it? <clears throat> you know, what's he going to do? He's going to start with the seven, and he's going to try to get that three five broke up. He's going to thin the seven into the side with top, maybe a smidge of left spin, come two rails, he'll come off the top short rail, or what we're seeing is the bottom short rail and then the right side long rail, and try to come into the 15, breaking up the 3-5. And that should leave him a good shot on the 1 afterwards as well. At least I think that's what he's doing here. That's what I would probably do here. Yep, sure did. Oh, he only hit the 3. Oh, what are the chances, man? Left himself tough here. You know, what are the chances he does that? Okay, if he can still make the three, he's all right, because I think the five will now go in the side. <clears throat> if he can make the three, he can draw it back one rail off the right side and come back out towards the middle of the table, make the one, and shape the five. It's a little tougher, but I think he can do it. Yep, there's the one rail. Got on the one ball. He got a good angle on the one, too. Now he can just follow. Um... He's got to be careful how he gets on this five, too, because where the eight ball sits, he's got to think about how he's going to shape the eight ball. So I would hit this one light and give myself the angle to come over and get at that eight ball. Let's see how he does it. If he gets dead straight on it, too, he could draw and come straight back for a shot on the eight ball down table, or as we're looking at it, up table, you know? You know? You guys, you following along, little Tippy? Are you going to sleep yet? Wake up, bro. We got a match to watch. Wake up. Wake up, little Timmy. All right, he played that nicely. Played that nicely, he did. He's got an angle, but he's got the wrong angle because now he's going into the 15. So this will be interesting how he gets on that 8. He may still be able to draw off of the 15, or it looks like he. I might even just set up for the bank shot here. You know, just roll it in and set up for the bank shot on the eight. That's not a that's not a horrible play, really. It's not a horrible play. Oh, he's gonna force follow, or is he just gonna set up for the bank? Because I don't see him putting draw on it. Doesn't look like. Oh, he banked it cross side. That was pretty, pretty crafty. It was also very tough. I would have rather <clears throat> set up for the bank straight back on the eight ball, probably, because that cross side bank. Look, when you're sending the cue ball down table into traffic. Uh, he could have just rolled that five in and then played the eight ball bank cross side. And I think he had to bank one either way. And I think that eight ball bank would have been a little easier. It would have been a little easier than the one he tried. Nevertheless, I mean, he made a good good attempt at it. It was a good try. It was a good shot. Good shot. But now Dan's back at the table with a pretty wide open look at things. 
It's got a pretty wide open table here. So far, Dan just hasn't found a smooth rhythm, I don't think. You know, he's missed a couple shots that uh, I don't think he would normally miss. We'll see if he can get into his rhythm and find that stroke. Jeez, oh, Pete, man. I think it's all the talking I do when I'm doing this. I, I don't get enough deep breaths in, so my brain needs, needs oxygen. You know, I'm talking too much. You talk too much. You never shut up. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, feel for Dan on that shot, man, because I know he plays better than that. He just wasn't feeling it there. <clears throat> just wasn't feeling it there. All right. Oh, he's going to be shooting over the over the 12 ball. Is, this, is he over the 12 ball? It's hard to tell from this angle, but it looks like the, the 12 ball might be in his way a little bit. If so, it's going to make this shot on the 8 ball a lot tougher, a whole lot tougher. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Vern? You know what I mean? All right, it's a moment of truth. This will put him on the hill if he makes it. Yeah, the 12 is not really in his way, but it's still not an easy cut up the rail. He knows that's why he's taking his time. He stood up and reset. He didn't like it. So he reset, got back down. I like the, I like the way he takes his time on the shot because when you, when you focus in like that, good things happen, man. And that's what we just saw there. He clutched up and made that A ball. Put himself on the hill. He's got four, only needs one, and Dan only has one and needs four. So we got a one to four race going on right now. Dave broke. He made a ball, and it's a pretty good-looking table. The table's pretty open, guys. We saw Dave break and run one already. If he break and runs this one, that'll be for the match. You know what I'm saying? That'll be for the match, and there's a good chance he will break and run this one because the table is pretty wide open. Um, the only thing you got to look at, if if you go with solids, you got to be somewhat cautious of the two five and the two or the four five and two three. Um, he went with stripes though, so it's not even a problem. Everything looks wide open except for the twelve ball, which he might be able to get at here. If he draws off the 11, it should go right into the 5-2, and he'll be dead on that 12. Just like that. That was a well-played, sir. Well-played shot, Dave McEwen. McEwen. You know? Is it McEwen or McEwen? I don't spell like McEwen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just messing with you, Dave. Davy Jones. Looking good here, man. I think Dave's going to get out here. I don't see anything in his way. I don't see anything stopping them. Two rails over to the 14. What's he going to do about the nine? He's probably going to shoot the nine first from this angle. I would. It's a lot easier. A whole lot easier to shoot it now than to try to shape it. Yeah, well played, sir. Is it going to go far enough? If not, he could play this 14 off the rail, so it's not that big of a deal. He'll play this probably one rail straight up and down just like that. And he'll put the eight in the side. And this, ladies and gentlemen, will be our match. Well played by both guys. This one was a great one to watch, man. Well played match. Congratulations to Dave. Uh, Dan, thank you so much for coming out to the tournament, man. I appreciate you and, and uh, Mike making that trip. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next one. And everybody out there watching, subscribe. Hit that like button. Get you some short rail merch. And we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.